probably seen this painting before. Maybe you've seen this one or this one, but what about this one? This piece is called Prisoner's Round by Vincent van Gogh. It might not be like those radiant pieces we know and love, but it's just as compelling. Because it's not only a profound depiction of inmates, it's also a portrayal of the artist's own experience as a prisoner. Wait, I went to prison? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, no, but did you say you love my paintings? Yeah, I did. I. You're pretty much one of the most famous painters who's ever lived. What? We're transported to a prison yard where a group of inmates gather to exercise. 33 men walk in a circle formation with lowered heads and sluggish steps. Never ending claustrophobic brick walls confine them with only a few small windows to break up the monotony. A guard stands to the right of the painting. The red color of his hat and hair feel like a respite from the oppressing colors that dominate the rest of the piece. To the right of him are two men that appear to be in conversation with one another. Maybe they're discussing the scene unfolding before them, or perhaps they're conversing about their future plans once they leave for the outside world. The bright and sunny painting style we're used to seeing from the Dutch artist has been turned on its head in this painting. The vibrant orange and sunflowers and the pulsating yellows and blues in Starry Night have been replaced with cool blues and nauseating greens. The inmates are rendered in the same depression pressing tones as the ground they walk on, as if emerging from its depths, their shadows forming puddles beneath their feet. The assumed sky above washes over the walls like a gentle mist that trickles down to a man in the center of the painting, looking at us. The man's stance is turned slightly away from the circular path, suggesting a subtle desire to break away from it. He is the only prisoner not wearing a hat, revealing his gaunt face and strawberry blonde hair. Could it be? It is. Vincent himself. Probably, anyway. We can't fully know for sure. At the time he created this painting, Vincent was a patient at the- Wait, I think I missed something. Let's rewind a bit. Stop. Did you notice these two little butterflies fluttering toward the top of the painting? The first time I saw it, I completely missed them. They're trapped between the brick walls, but if they just fly a little higher, they might be able to break free. Back to what I was saying. At the time he created this painting, Vincent was a patient at the St. Paul asylum. It's no secret that the artist struggled with mental health issues, financial struggles, and interpersonal issues. Just one year prior, he cut off part of his own ear during a fight with Paul Gauguin. He then proceeded to wrap up his severed ear and bring it to a woman at a brothel both of the men frequented. Following the incident, Vincent had no memory of the events. This led those around him to believe he had suffered a mental breakdown, which led to his involuntary hospitalization. By by January 1889, Vincent was able to return home, though his health remained fragile, and in the following months he underwent several hospitalizations. The turning point came in March when, following a petition signed by 30 locals who described him as the red-headed madman, he was involuntarily admitted to the hospital once more. He was discharged in April and shortly thereafter moved in with Dr. Felix Ray, the physician who treated his ear. Vincent created this portrait of Dr. Ray during his hospitalization earlier that year, but Felix didn't really like his painting at all and used it to repair his chicken coop before finally giving it away. It's now estimated to be worth upwards of $50 million. Soon after moving in with the doctor, Vincent voluntarily admitted himself to the St. Paul Asylum in St. Remy, where he would remain for the following year. Within the confines of the hospital, Vincent experienced a period of remarkable productivity. He created more than 150 paintings during his time there, including some of his most iconic works. The nighttime view looking out of his barred bedroom window became the inspiration for Starry Night. Almond Blossoms was a gift for his brother Theo and sister-in-law Joe in celebration of the arrival of their newborn son, named in Vincent's honor. Thea van Gogh worked as an art dealer and offered his brother unwavering emotional and financial support throughout his life. In fact, it was Theo who convinced Vincent to take up painting in the first place. Through thick and thin, Theo continued to love and admire his brother, something that often eluded Vincent, he writes. 
I'd much rather that he'd called his boy after Pa, whom I've thought about so often these days, than after me. But anyway, as it's been done now, I started right away to make a painting for him to hang in their bedroom. Large branches of white almond blossom against a blue sky. The focus of his paintings were of the interior of the hospital and the surrounding garden. While nature had been Vincent's primary source of artistic inspiration, the hospital limited his access to the outdoors. Thus, he got his ideas from referencing other artists' work. He created The Good Samaritan after Delacroix, Noon Rest from Work and The Sower after Millet, The Drinkers after Damier, and Prisoner's Round after an engraving by Gustave Dor. So yes, it's true. This painting is a copy, though some believe it's actually an upgrade from the original. Let me know what you think. Vincent completed Prisoner's Round in February 1890 toward the end of his stay at the asylum, and throughout its creation, he had an urgent desire to get out of the hospital, but he wasn't cleared to go until the following May. And even then, he was required to be under medical supervision. So Vincent moved in with Dr. Gachet, a French physician living in a Parisian suburb. However, Vincent's initial impression of the doctor was far from favorable. Describing him as iller than I am, it seemed to me, or let's say just as much. A couple months after moving, Vincent wrote to his brother Theo, I painted another three large canvases since then. There are immense stretches of wheat fields under turbulent skies. I made a point of trying to express sadness, extreme loneliness. You'll see this soon, I hope, for I hope to bring them to you to Paris as soon as possible, since I'd almost believe that these canvases will tell you what I can't say in words, what I consider healthy and fortifying about the countryside. A few weeks later, on July 29, 1890, Vincent went into the same countryside and took his own life. He was 37 years old, only a decade after he began painting for the first time at the age of 27. In this short period as an artist, he created over 900 paintings along with a multitude of sketches and drawings. French painter Emile Bernard sent a letter to Albert Aurier delivering the news of Vincent's death. He writes, on the walls of the room where his body was laid out, all his last canvases were hung, making a sort of halo for him, and the brilliance of the genius that radiated from them made this death even more painful for us artists who were there. Among the canvases surrounding his coffin was Prisoner's Round. Bernard went on to say, There we were, completely silent, all of us together around this coffin that held our friend. I looked at the studies, convicts walking in a circle surrounded by high prison walls, a canvas inspired by door of a terrifying variety and which is also symbolic of his end. Wasn't life like that for him? A high prison like this with such high walls, so high, and these people walking endlessly round this pit, weren't they the poor artists? The poor damned souls walking past under the whip of destiny? Theo was broken by Vincent's death, and only six months later, he passed away as well, leaving his wife, Joe with the baby to feed and hundreds of Vincent's paintings. So what did she decide to do? Exactly what her late husband always dreamed of doing, make Vincent famous. Joe started by surrounding herself with people who could help her get Vincent's art out there. She held exhibition after exhibition showcasing his paintings, and by the early 1900s, all of her hard work began paying off. By the time she died in 1925, Vincent was known around the world and she had sold almost all of his paintings, except for the ones she was especially attached to. She wrote, I am delighted that after years of indifference from the public towards Vincent and his work, to feel that the battle has been won. When Vincent was in his 20s, he became a missionary and relocated to the Borinage mining district in Belgium. Here, he taught the sick and impossible impoverished the teachings of the Bible. He was called the Christ of the coal mine as he gave away all of his possessions and slept on the floor to experience life like those in his congregation. When church authorities found out about Vincent's arrangement, they removed him from his position, saying he, quote, undermined the dignity of the priesthood. So why did Vincent even create Prisoner's Round? Maybe it was an attempt to connect with the less fortunate like he did as a missionary, or maybe it signifies the feeling he had of captivity within his own mind almost always free but ultimately held captive by invisible forces. Or maybe it represents the confinement he felt within the walls of the asylum. Or maybe, in the end, it's really nothing more than a copy. What do you think? Click the link in the description box below to check out my coloring book featuring many of the paintings I showed in this video. And thank you to my amazing channel members. I'll see you in the next one.